is concerned, we are halfway through, and uh, most probably today is also a half moon day. I think so. So um, I think everything so far so good. I guess. <laughs> Um, since there has been several questions on the subject of mantra and wanting to know the meaning of the mantra and benefits of the mantra power in mantra and so on, because much of our practice, uh, as well as practice of Tantric Buddhism in general, <clears throat> involve so much with mantra, and particularly in our case also, with this practice of Yunne, we do spend a vast amount of time in reciting the mantra. And we have two mantras, primarily speaking, the long dharani and the short six-syllable mantra of Avalokiteshwara. The Buddha of love and compassion. In other words, mantra is mantra of Avalokiteshwara and Avalokiteshwara is embodiment of all the Buddha's loving-kindness and compassion combined together, so to speak. And that's the uh, Tantric Buddhist understanding, how various different deities and manifestations work and what it represents and so on. Everything is energy as far as innermost profound way of understanding the nature of phenomena is concerned. And sometimes these energies are manifested wrongly and other times rightly, so to speak. And the understanding and belief is that as far as manifestations of deities are concerned, Buddhas are concerned, it's correct, perfect, and complete enlightenment. Then, as far as manifestation is concerned, uh, in terms of whether or not there's any limitation to it, sky is the limit again. That is why <coughs> those who come across with Tantric Buddhism, you see all kinds of <coughs> strange looking deities to peaceful looking <coughs> deities to all kinds of things, you know? wrathful to peaceful to semi-wrathful and peaceful. And then you will also see deities, you know, like even drinking bloods and things like that, all kinds of things. So that, that's just different kinds of manifestation for different kinds of reason. <coughs> like that, see? So, 
the sky is the limit when it comes to manifestation. And then there's all kinds of manifestation. And that is because there's all kinds of enlightened energy. <coughs> and compassion is one of those energy. And that is represented by our Lokiteshwara, the Buddha of love and compassion. And the correct way of understanding is embodiment of all the Buddha's loving kindness and compassion is what it is. That's our look at the So, mantra of Avalokiteshwara, long dharani and six syllable mantra, mantras. Now, what does mantra mean? Its essential nature, how it works, What is the meaning behind a specific sound of the mantra, etc.? Mantra is a Sanskrit word. And the defining characteristic of mantra by the term noun mantra what does it mean well The term mantra has a connotation of as a matter of fact something like it stands for essentially speaking protecting the mind or our consciousness so to speak. Simply speaking, that is what it really means when you say mantra, mantra. Well, what's the meaning of mantra? Definition of mantra? That is what it means, protecting the mind. It protects the mind. You know, generally speaking, you know, everybody just have a vague understanding, general conceptual understanding of what mantra is. For some, it may be these prayers that you repeat. Repetitious prayers are mantras. For others, it's some kind of secret to something, and so on and so on. But actually, you know, mantra by definition means protecting the mind, protecting the spirit of ours. In terms of its uh, vast meaning, array of meaning, mantra has all kinds of understanding, actually. There is an understanding that every possible sound in the universe could be qualified as mantra as well, too. <laughs> 